It feels like it was just yesterday that Intel released their 8th generation Core i lineup of processors to bring the fight back to AMD's recently released Ryzen CPUs. But it's now been almost two years since these chips released, and they're still as popular as ever. With the i5 and i7 lines receiving a bump in specs, the budget-focused i3 series also received some pretty drastic improvements over its previous generation equivalents. The most notable of these new CPUs was the i3-8100, which offered previous generation i5 performance figures for i3 prices. So now that we're almost two years removed from the release of this chip, how does it hold up when compared to its more beefy siblings, and is it still worth the purchase in 2019? Okay, so this is the Intel Core i3-8100, which was the first quad-core budget-focused chip released by Intel back on October 5th of 2017. This chip was actually developed primarily to compete with AMD's newish Ryzen 3 CPUs, which beat out the previous Gen i3-7100 rather soundly in terms of bench results and real-world performance. So to compete with AMD's arguably more value-oriented chips and bring more value to the 1151 socket, Intel decided to boost the general specs of the 8th Gen i3 series to more closely match the specs that the i5 line previously occupied. With 4 cores at a lock 3.6GHz, this chip doesn't offer overclocking or even any sort of boost clock. But what this chip does offer is a rather large 100% increase in total cash over its previous generation stepbrother, the i3-7100. In terms of power efficiency, the i3-8100 is actually rather efficient, and although it has a 27% increase in TDP over the previous Gen i3, the out-of-the-box cooler that comes with this chip is perfectly adequate for keeping this chip cool and quiet. But in our test run today, we're going to be using a Corsair H60 AIO to extract as much performance as possible, and ensure that there's absolutely no chance of thermal throttling on any of the chips we're testing. Our general test system specs for today are also relatively mid-range, with an NVIDIA GTX 1060 playing support to our test chips, which should ensure that there's not bottlenecks anywhere in the system that can hold back our benchmarks. And just for some added spice, we're going to be throwing in results from our i3-8350K, just to check out how the more budget-friendly offering compares to the premium tier chip. So without any further ado, let's get into some performance figures. Alright, so starting off with some CPU-focused benchmarks. To check out how this chip holds up for productivity use cases, we ran a 5-minute 1080p video render using our editing software DaVinci Resolve 14. After running this test a total of 5 times on each CPU, the i3-8100 came out about 12% behind the premium i3 offering. To further see how this chip does under stress, we ran the Cinebench R15 CPU test, and based on the results, the i3-8100 is about 27% behind the 8350K. Now, when compared to previous generation i3 offerings, this is actually a huge improvement, and is actually an i5-7400 territory in terms of the Cinebench numbers. Our Universe Sandbox 2 bench run also proved to us that this chip is more than capable in terms of general compute usage, this time closing the performance gap to only 6%. Ashes of the Singularity also proved to close in on the more specced out i3-8350K, this time only sitting at 9% behind the more premium tier offering from Intel. So when it comes to productivity use case scenarios, the i3-8100 actually doesn't seem too terrible, but it's beat up by its more beefy brother, which in all honesty isn't that big of a surprise. So most of us won't be using the i3-8100 for video editing or other office-related tasks anyways, but instead for its primary marketed purpose, gaming. Starting off with Apex Legends, which isn't all that demanding of a title, and at 1080p, the i3-8100 was able to hold up against its more high-end competition. While it did sit at a 4% deficit in terms of average frame rate, overall gameplay felt almost identical between the two chips. In fact, if you put these two CPUs side by side, it would be very difficult for me to tell the two apart when looking strictly at gaming performance. Battlefield 5 was also another strong performance on the part of the i3-8100, and although minimum frame rate suffered a bit, the game remained beyond playable at almost all times. Granted, there was a little more stuttering here and there on the less expensive i3 chip, but it wasn't anything that a small settings tweak couldn't fix. Our next game, Black Ops 4, wasn't as nice to the 8100 as it was to our 8350K. Based on our averages from our test run, the i3-8100 was about 5% behind in terms of general frame rate. But in terms of stability, the less expensive chip proved to stutter significantly more frequently, and also had a lot more sudden drops in performance. Thankfully though, Doom 2016 seemed to correct this issue, and gave us a buttery smooth experience. 
Whether it was Vulcan giving the 8100 a boost or just simply having more overhead, the experience was great on both chips and gave us comparable performance to previous i5s. Up next is one of the best looking games of this generation, and on the i3-8100, Far Cry 5 was a great experience, even though it lagged behind the i3-8350K by 11%. Overall, it's impressive that this i3-branded chip can offer this level of performance, and although other chips do outperform it by a rather sound margin, for its price you're getting excellent and flexible gaming performance. For Honor, once again, it hit it out of the park, with a solid 111 FPS average. This game just runs very well on all different sorts of hardware, and you'd be able to get a locked 60 FPS rather easily with a much cheaper Pentium G5400. But that being said, the performance offered in this title by the i3-8100 is quite impressive when the fact that it's a budget-focused chip is brought into consideration. Up next, Fortnite. And once again, the i3-8100 returns some very playable FPS numbers. While yes, this is Fortnite and it runs well on just about anything, if you're looking for a cheaper CPU to complete your Fortnite-focused rig, then the i3-8100 would make an excellent heart to your system. GTA 5 also handed in some solid console-killing performance, and although the cheaper i3 processor sat about 7% behind the more expensive premium tier offering, this is still some fantastic performance, given that this game can be pretty rough on CPUs, especially with high population densities. Now, to wrap up our test suite, we ran PUBG at 1080p to roughly gauge how well the i3-8100 is able to stream in high-quality assets. And based on the results, it passed our test with flying colors. While there were rough minimums and stuttering, when considering the holistic experience, it was great for an i3-series CPU. And that's really what the i3-8100 is offering in 2019. While it may not have i7 rivaling performance, it does fill a niche in the mid-range and budget market that AMD found when they released the Ryzen 3 series processors earlier in 2017. When stacked up to its AMD competition, the i3-8100 has a clock-per-clock -clock and general architectural edge over its Zen and Zen Plus-based contemporaries. But this higher performance does come at a higher price, with this CPU usually going for over $20 more than its Ryzen 3 competition. Now, in 2019, is this chip worth purchasing when there are excellent mid-range chips such as the i5-9400F and Ryzen 5 2600 available at such inexpensive prices? Well, when considering its price point, the i3-8100 is a fantastic chip and brings previous generation i5 levels of performance to the budget space. In terms of gaming, it sits behind its more expensive brother, the i3-8350K, by anywhere between 5 to 15 percent. But when it comes to productivity-related tasks, such as video editing and rendering, it falls behind by a much more noticeable margin. So where does its value lie on the current market? Well, as of early 2019, the i3-8100 is probably the best value budget-minded chip that you can buy fresh out of the box. But if you're prioritizing performance rather than price, then going with the i5-9400F or even the Ryzen 5 2600 would give you the experience that you're looking for. At the end of the day, the i3-8100 is a fantastic chip that competes excellently with AMD's Ryzen 3 line. It's one of the best value i3 CPUs that we've ever received, and if you're thinking about picking one up, then you totally should. It's an excellent chip and should be relevant for years to come. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Also, if you're interested in participating in the 2000 subscriber RX480 giveaway, then the link to enter will be in the description, and it should only take a minute or two to have multiple entries. And also tell us, what do you think of the i3-8100? Do you think we should have tested it in different scenarios, and what do you think of its overall value? Tell us what you think! I can't wait to see what you have to say, and I hope you have a fantastic day. So, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.